Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo Paparicamba from the Aeronautic Institute of Technology and also a CFD engineer at Angels Company. And I'd like to show you part of my work on wind turbine airfoils optimization. So I prepared this short presentation divided in four topics, being the motivation behind this work, the methodology we use it, uh, the validation of computational tools, and finally the results. So Growing concerns about world energy crisis and environmental problems has led to a search for alternative renewable energy sources. And because of this, we have seen more investments and studies in the wind power uh, technology field. For example, this table shows the number of wind power installations and it's growing in several countries. So we can actually see that it's indeed a field that's getting more attention year after year. And bringing it to a national scope, Brazil has an energy matrix based on the hydraulic energy. And even though it is a renewable source, it also has some problems related to environmental impact. So wind power appears as an alternative to diversificate our energy matrix. And Brazil already has 3% of wind power installations over the world. So this brief contextualization shows uh, the importance of investing and studying uh, this field. And one interested point would be to improve the wind power uh, extraction efficiency. And one possible way to achieve this uh, is by the improving aerodynamic efficiency of wind turbine projects. And in this field, one point that it is requires more attention is the design of airfoils to be used specifically for wind power applications. And besides, we identify a lack of working relating how some aerodynamic parameters can affect the results of these projects, these designs. So our major goal here is to design a wind turbine airfoil based on aerodynamic optimization and investigate how some aerodynamic parameters can affect the results of the, the use optimization. And this paper specifically regards angle of attack variations. So first thing we need to define uh, optimization method. So we chose the gradient based optimization. And the idea behind this, uh, this method is, let's suppose a generic function like this one in the picture, and also a generic starting point x0, y0, this method changed the function variables, x and y in this case, in the direction of the function gradient in order to reach the minimum point or maximum depending on the problem. So regarding uh, airfoil and a flow around this airfoil, this first equation shows the calculation of the gradient of a cost function i. And, uh, where this first term is related to flow variables. And the problem is, in aerodynamic optimizations using CFD applications, uh, which are aerodynamic uh, analysis, the calculation of this first term is very expensive. That's why we are using uh, the adjoint approach. This approach is the insertion of the second equation in the first one. So we can choose the Lagrangian multiplier in order to eliminate this expensive term. So we use this method in our case. And our case is the maximization of the lift drag ratio or aerodynamic efficiency, which is the most important parameter in a wind turbine airfoil project. And it's also uh, subject to a geometric constraint of thickness higher than 0.12 for structural reasons. We are using uh, hick haines bump functions as the parameterization method. And, sorry, and we can see uh, in this picture our baseline airfoil, NACA 0012, uh, and the design variables distributed over the airfoil chart. So we apply this optimization for different angles of attack to investigate the outcomes of this variation. Uh, in doing so, we are using the SU2 code. This code is an 
open source code provided by the Stanford University. So before proceeding to our results, we need to validate uh, the methodology and the SU2 capabilities for this purpose. So two things need to be uh, validated. First is the CFD analysis, and the second is the optimization method validation itself. So first, regarding the CFD validation, to perform CFD simulations, we need to construct a computational mesh. And the size of this mesh was defined by a grid independency study, where we considered four different uh, domain size represented in this picture. And selecting the largest one as a reference C, and also adopting the maximum error criteria of 5% for CL and CD, which are the lift and drag coefficients. This table shows that the second mesh already has a sufficient precision in terms of CL and CD without needing to enlarge too much these mesh domains. We also investigate the refinement level through this grid independence study. So starting from the standard mesh we are seeing this picture, we refine it with double of number of points uh, homogeneously. And based on these two solutions, we estimate an uh, exact solution, a hypothetical exact solution. And again, this table shows that the standard mesh already has a uh, substantial precision with now needing to uh, additional refining level. So we apply it in this mesh the Navier Stokes equation with this Palar Tomara's model, uh, turbulence model, and perform some simulations on the NACA 0012 airfoil. And to validate it, we compared these numerical results with experimental results from wind tunnel uh, tests. So these two graphs show uh, the lift coefficient and drive coefficient. And we can see a very good agreement between numerical um, and experimental results. So regarding the validation of the optimization method, we perform the benchmark optimization problem proposed by AIAA, which is the drag minimization of the Ray 2822 airfoil. And this picture shows uh, the pressure coefficient over the airfoil chart. And the blue line represents our results. So as we can see here, uh, our optimization method successfully reduced uh, the effects of this shock wave you can see in the dashed line, and following the same tendency of severity other uh, references with different uh, optimization methods. So based on these results, we can state that uh, the methodology and computational tools are validated for our studied purpose. So we can jump to the result. We performed that uh, optimization in three different angles of attack, namely alpha equal to five degrees, seven degrees, and nine degrees. This picture shows a comparison between uh, the baseline airfoil, NACA 0012, and the optimized shapes. We are calling these shapes OPT5, OPT7, and OPT9. And generally, it's notable that lower angle of attack resulted in more expressive uh, geometrical deformations. To understand why it happened, we need to investigate it aerodynamically. So the left picture shows the streamlines around the OPT5 and OPT9 geometries. And as we can see in OPT9 case, the flow reached airfoil in a point more distant from the leading edge, which makes this flow more critical in terms of flow attachment. Um, it suggests that if the optimizer had um, deformed this shape as much as it did for opt 5 case, it would have caused a stall or flow unattachment. So to confirm it, or at least to strengthen this idea, we performed a simulation uh, of the opt 5 geometry under opt 9 conditions. And as you can see in the left, in the right picture, there is indeed a stall in the trailing edge. So once we understood why uh, these different happens, 
let's investigate how it affects uh, our cost function or aerodynamic efficiency. So this graph shows the evolution of the percentage gain of aerodynamic efficiency over the optimization cycles. And as expected, more uh, expressive geometrical deformations resulted in more percentage efficiency gain. However, if you want to select one or foil to be used in a wind turbine uh, project, we want to select the one that provides the more efficiency value, the absolute value, no matter the, uh, the efficiency gain of the process. So to, to select this or foil, we need to investigate uh, their efficiency curves. So we got the three geometries and extract their drag polars representing the left side. Based on these uh, curves, we extract their efficiency curves so we can compare the, the maximum values or the peaks here. And even though the uh, differences are not expressive, uh, opt 7 case resulted in more efficiency value. So it would be the most appropriate for you to be used in this project. So the take home message here is that we prove the gradient based optimization coupled with uh, a joint approach and CFD analysis within the SU2 capabilities is suitable to perform a wind turbine or foil design. And more than that, uh, we shown that angle of attack has an important hold in a wind turbine or foil project, so it has to be taken into account. And for future works, we are going to investigate how the meteorological conditions affect the results of the optimization method. So thank you for your time, and I would be glad to answer any questions in the comments. Thank you again.